This should have been the easiest win of 2023. Look, no matter what, game development is hard. There's no easy recipe to success. I'm not saying that making Jedi Survivor was an easy task, but this was the easiest win of 2023. You had the foundation set and everyone liked it, but it also felt like there was plenty of room to improve. You established solid characters and a fairly mediocre story, but people ate that story up because it's Star Wars and all you Star Wars fans are foaming at the mouth for anything that can meet the quality bar of kind of okay, I guess. And then the trailers hit for Jedi Survivor and they gave off this confidence like, yeah, we know what you want. Here's more stances for your lightsaber, bigger explorable areas, a more explosive narrative. Look at all these crazy animations and finisher moves. It's everything you liked already, but better. It even had a pretty tight release cycle. All in all, from the announcement trailer to the release of the game, less than a year went by. This wasn't some long, drawn-out process. Process. Out of every single game coming out this year, this and Spider-Man 2 were the ones where I was like, yeah, I know exactly what to expect here in terms of quality, it's gonna be hard to mess these up. But, uh, I don't know, this game just didn't end up as good as I thought it would be. The biggest talking point around it is its performance, and to be clear, yeah, it runs pretty bad, especially on PC, but even on my PS5 I was having consistent issues. It's not nearly as bad as Redfall, mind you, but that's really the piss calling the poo-poo stinky. But I feel like the general consensus is that without those problems this would have been an 8 or 9 out of 10 game. It's just a shame that the experience was ruined by poor performance, and honestly, I don't share the same sentiment. I feel like the game's performance issues are just kind of shielding the fact that even without them, Jedi Survivor is just okay. It does a lot to expand what Fallen Order did, but it doesn't necessarily improve that stuff, and the novelty of being a new action series isn't really there anymore. To me, it just doesn't show enough real growth from the last game. It's kind of like if Fallen Order was a small bowl of cake batter, and Jedi Survivor is six metric tons of cake batter. Listen, I don't mind having a little cake batter here and there, but I thought the next logical step was to put this in the oven. The Jedi series still feels like it can't lay its flag in the action-adventure scene. It's too reined in to be a hack and slasher, too grounded to be considered combo-based, too spammy to be Souls-esque, and too nondescript to be its own thing. It's like it's scared of making any real choices, and it goes past safe or lowest common denominator and almost feels identityless. The only identity it has is Star Wars. I thought the story was fine, I thought the exploration was fine, I thought the combat was fine, I thought the performance was rough, and there's not much that I can point to and say, oh, I'd love to see this in another game. This is something that I didn't mind playing, it kept me entertained enough, but it had the chance to be a lot more, and a likely third entry in the series needs to make a few foundational changes to unlock the real potential of the Star Wars Jedi series. Alright, let me get performance out of the way early. It was really frustrating. I didn't get the brunt of it being on PS5, and some of this stuff has been fixed since, but it was a lot of small annoying details that you don't want to see when paying for a top-of-the-line, single-player, next-gen game. It just takes the wind out of your sails. The biggest issue for me was the game constantly stuttering. I played it on performance mode, and while I don't have the actual numbers, from my estimation it was ping-ponging between 30 to 60 FPS, and sometimes looked like it dropped to under 20 for a few seconds. It was happening all throughout the opening, and even outside of combat scenarios when I was just hanging around open environments. The the patch did help a bit, but it still wasn't perfect. The easiest way to show off how bad this could get is by showing the focus parry move with the dual wield stance. Pressing triangle with this stance basically activated desaturated slideshow mode. I mean, this is just plain ridiculous. It takes all the fun out of doing this. It was also a bummer to see the pre-rendered cutscenes running at 30 FPS and somehow featuring their own share of frame drops, especially during transition periods. I never ran into anything game breaking or crashes on PS5, but the inconsistent frames are a real pain to deal with. I'll maintain that I'm not an FPS snob, but there's something kind of nauseating and also frustrating about a game that can at least hit a stable frame rate. I also have to call out the pop-in and textures which look downright terrible on performance mode. There were times where I was looking at areas and I was like, this feels like it could be low settings on PC. I understand that sacrifices need to be made to hit 60 frames instead of 30, but it looked like performance mode straight up atom bombed every setting and still only crawled past 40 FPS. Sometimes I'd spend minutes next to buildings waiting for textures to load in just to see how long it'd take, only to realize that this is just how they're supposed to look, I guess. Everything's a little bit fuzzy, blurry, or lacking detail. Jarvis, turn the anti-aliasing to hyperdrive. You can just see how awkwardly some edges have been smoothed over. And like I said, there is some horrible popping sometimes. I mean, seriously, look how cock this looks until basically the entire game decides to hop into the scene 10 seconds later like some kind of drunk stage actor who's missing all his cues. It literally looks like I'm rendering something in Blender in real time. It's a shame too because the vistas are gorgeous from far away and then you end up getting close and they can be so dull looking for this and other reasons I'll get into later and it just feels like a waste of these environments. And I feel like I have to mention this here, we gotta prepare for this with Respawn's future releases. It kind of feels like we were blindsided by the performance here but at this point we gotta acknowledge that this has been a consistent problem with this studio. 
video. They have no clue how to optimize their games to reduce the file sizes. They've always been unnecessarily massive. Jedi Survivor is big, but it should not be 155 gigs big. All of their multiplayer games have at some point been ransacked by hackers, and Fallen Order also had a lot of bugs and performance issues at launch. We just gave them a pass because it was in the trenches of EA's worst moves yet, and it seemed like the game was rushed out the door, but it was still a solid experience underneath, so we let it slide. But at this point, for future reference, remember that Respawn is a solid studio with a track record for technical failings at times, so do not believe their next game will run well until you see it with your own eyes. I don't want to harp on the technical side too long though, you get it, it's not ideal, whatever. Now let's get to the crux of this game and justify my stance on it so I prove that I'm not a generational hater. I had high hopes for Jedi Survivor's story. Fallen Orders was entertaining enough in the moment, but I remember exactly 0% of it. I'm sure to Star Wars fans, all the references and world building did something for you, but I never had much to get invested in. Jedi Survivor's task to me was to jack up the emotional stakes of the story, get me invested without leaning too hard on references. They have a good setup for an epic tale of triumph, what with all the Jedi's gone and whatnot, but Fallen Order was too paint by numbers to be anything memorable on its own, so give me something visceral and real. They gave me lukewarm soup. I do like Cal better in this game for sure, he seems more self-assured and like a confident action man while still not having all the answers. And I like some of the new characters they brought in too, like Turgle. I like Turgle. Any humanoid characters feel incredibly dry though, sometimes one would pop up and I'd be like, oh yeah, you're involved with this too somehow, alright. Couldn't save Armaius. He gave his life for this. I'm sorry. I know you did your best, Cal. Yeah, you seem really broken up about it. I wouldn't say the narrative dropped the ball or anything, but I just felt like I didn't care. Cal's mission felt like a task that I needed to complete, not something that I was deeply interested in seeing played out. And maybe that's because I'm not a Star Wars fan, I don't really want to know how this period of time we never saw in the movies went down, but you can still make a narrative that's engaging enough for a new fan. Like I wish they spent more time to express Cal's isolation being one of the only Jedi left, or made me want to personally get the Jedi back because I believed the world needed them instead of just telling me that they did. I know there's a hatred for over talkative game characters nowadays because they're usually handled with the grace of a pig on roller skates, but I think it would have been nice for Cal to tell stories that he'd heard of the Jedi or had experienced himself to BD1. Because the game usually goes like an hour or so of straight gameplay and then you have maybe a one to two minute cutscene which is nearly always some kind of quick exposition or introduction to a new person or villain or anything without too much emotional depth and then you go back to gameplay. Real attempts at emotional beats are very few and far between. The only time I felt like I felt anything in the first 15 hours or so was when Cal was overtaken by emotions in the opening because somebody got shot and killed protecting him. I'd wish we'd seen more of that. And I get that this game doesn't want to bog itself down with cutscenes, that's fair, I don't want every game to be a Naughty Dog special where you sometimes watch cutscenes for 10 plus minutes, but then give me something in between to help me grow my relationship with this character, even if it's just some wistful stories of the past while I'm exploring. I also don't know what the point was of the mind control mechanic in the story, like that felt incredibly phoned in, I would've just taken this out. I guess they were trying to show some Jedi mind tricks, but this just felt goofy and unnecessary and random when it popped up. It actually reminded me a lot of the dialogue options in Uncharted 4, which jump scare me when they show up, because I always forget that they try to put dialogue options in that game. I would also always get what I wanted when the mind trick option showed up, and I wondered if I was just super lucky or what. So I searched up how the system worked, and I saw this article that was like, ooh, there's more to this than it seems. You don't just wave your hand around and trick somebody. Let's explain how this works. And I was like, oh, cool. Maybe this is a real mechanic. And I scrolled down, and they were like, yeah, you can pick either option. It never matters. You always win. Okay. I can't really categorically pick apart issues that I had with the narrative because I really don't have any specifics, I never had a problem with it, I just never had a huge reason to like it much either, which is always a weird feeling to try and explain, but hopefully I managed to get my point across. Let's talk about the exploration. Before I get into the level or world design or anything, let me first talk about something that you're going to be seeing all the time when exploring, and that's the character animations. I wouldn't normally talk about this because it's usually not a huge deal, but Jedi Survivor's animations often feel very, very awkward. It all starts with the running animation, which literally looks like somebody rigged it in dreams. It's very inflatable man in some stances, and in other stances it looks like somebody accidentally dragged an animation set for the Hulk and put it on this small ginger kid instead. And the awkwardness extends to other actions like wall jumping, double jumping, dropping, or climbing. It also extends to combat but I'll talk about that in the next section. Animation transitions are very sudden and Cal never looks very natural doing the things he does, so when he's doing things, you know, 
all game, it can be a little bit distracting. Generally, the traversal is solid. You can climb, wall run, zip line, dash, grapple, and swing, and the game does a good job of weaving these into larger traversal segments. It's just a little bit awkward in doing so sometimes. When you're not getting around and your little feet sees, you're riding mounts, like a bird or this big chicken. It's nice to have these in open environments, and very occasionally they're used to help with puzzles, but you're not like speed racing with them or anything. There is one mount that's used in a big action set piece later, which I won't spoil, but you never see it again. It's kind of sad, actually. The mounts can also have some weird animations too, especially if they have a crazier design, they can look laugh out loud stupid in action. Like again, I'm not a Star Wars fan, so excuse me if I'm about to disrespect everyone's favorite space animal, but what the fuck? When you enter a new planet or something, you get these big establishing shots of the full landscape, and it always looks great, but a major problem I have is that in the first half of the game or more, a lot of what you're exploring is dry or deserty. The floors and walls and caves are all golden brown and sandy or dark gray and rocky, and the only major contrast you get throughout most of the game are sleeker blue interiors. Occasionally you get dropped into an area that's visually stimulating for an extended period of time, but most biomes are not that interesting and they go on for miles. There are six planets in Jedi Survivor, and two of them are small areas mainly filled with some collectibles and whatnot. Of the four main explorable areas, two of them, the two largest by far, mind you, Kobo and Jetta, very creative, Mr. Lucas, look like this. I don't know, I don't, I don't love that, I can't say I'm a fan. I'm also disappointed that they didn't overhaul the map system, because I always hated the Fallen Order, Doom, Deep Rock Galactic style 3D hollow maps, they're so confusing. I will say this version is a little bit cleaner, a bit easier to follow, but it's sometimes super confusing trying to get your bearings, especially considering this is a semi-open world metroidvania, so there's a lot of places you can't go yet, and you need to find the places you're supposed to go right now, and that can be hard when the map is a shvectum in your rectum. You combine that with the dry looking planets, and for the most part, weak rewards for exploration, sticking mainly to cosmetic stuff and just a few useful items or abilities, and I just didn't feel super incentivized to explore during my playthrough. The side stuff I did do was solid, but sometimes I'd just be roaming around the dry desert for 20 minutes uncovering different empty parts of the map, and so I made the call to clean up most of the side activities after I rolled credits if I was feeling up to it. The puzzles in this game are pretty solid, some were easy, some were a bit tougher, but they're usually all at a pretty decent scale. I definitely felt sometimes that the game would put me through a big traversal segment and then give me a puzzle and then take me on another traversal segment and I'd forget that I was even supposed to be playing an action adventure game, but these elements on their own were pretty solid. The last point I'll make here is that Jedi Survivor's world feels thoroughly over-designed. The pathways and architecture don't give the impression of exploring this planet in deep space with its own colonies and wildlife and structures and caves and whatnot. It feels like going to space Ikea. This game uses the bonfire checkpoint system with its meditation spots, which Fallen Order did as well, but it's not designed around that system at all. Every 10 seconds you're unlocking new shortcuts because the game doesn't want you to do the busy work of, say, climbing the section you just climbed again and that's fine, I don't want to do the same climbing section over and over, but it's so frequent that you might as well drop the pretense and give us automatic checkpoints. I guess maybe they thought it'd be a bit awkward if they abandoned the meditation system from the last game, and maybe it would feel weird for the first like 30 minutes or so, but then they could just design the game like they clearly wanted to. Because they don't want to go too long without sending a shortcut back to a meditation spot, the levels are forced to be overly simple and rectangular because they got a loop back to 15 seconds ago. Here's a perfect example of what I mean. The game wants to take me here, but they've locked this door from this side. So you have to go around this tiny little square and fight some bad guys, then reach this door and unlock it as a shortcut. A shortcut that cuts this out of your run back. Like, that's just silly. They wanted to pad out the level, but they also didn't want to make it too inaccessible, so they end up ruining the illusion of exploration. I really don't mind when a video game is really video gamey, but if you make shortcuts feel meaningless and glaringly point out the places where you've added filler for no reason, then exploring the world just isn't a fun experience. Just like the story and exploration, I think the combat in Survivor is proof that bigger isn't always better, sometimes it's just bigger. The things that made Fallen Order tick are all still here. You can redirect blasters back onto stormtroopers, you can parry and flourish your big glowy killing stick all fancy like, you can grab enemies and chuck them off a cliff or blow them up by launching them into another enemy, but the biggest new change is that you can now run multiple stances for your lightsaber. You have five options for stances, vanilla lightsaber, double bladed, dual wield, blaster, and essentially a greatsword. I found all of these useful in different settings and I like changing between them. I really thought I'd be running basically the dual wield stance the entire game, but I wasn't the biggest fan of its force attack even without the side effect of turning my PS5 into Swiss cheese, and I appreciate the crowd control of the dual blade, the ranged options of the blaster, and the risk reward of the cross guard. They definitely added more variety, and I think the stances were a perfect way to build out the sequel.
All right, I said some nice things. Now it's time to go back to hater mode. I really don't get why the game only lets you set two stances at a time. It would be so easy and convenient and fun to let me just quick swap between all five depending on the scenario, but for some reason you can only change which two you can access at meditation points. It just lets certain stances hang out to dry, because a stance like the blaster I only wanted to use in very specific circumstances. Everywhere else it felt like I was wasting one of my two slots, but I only know when those circumstances will be when I'm in them, and at that point I can't swap it out at a meditation point. I just really don't get why they didn't shuffle some controls around and give us a weapon wheel. Hell, there's already a sub menu with R1 that lets you choose force powers, so if you didn't want a weapon wheel, just use R1 and add more shortcuts to the D-pad. Maybe they do have a reason for just limiting it to two at a time, but I, whatever the reason is, I don't like it. I also think that the lightsaber skills and the skills in general just weren't as transformative as I'd like them to be. First of all, since you can only pick two stances at a time and will likely end up with two favorites or go-tos, you might not want to put upgrades into the other stances when you could just improve your mains, which makes switching your styles even less incentivized. But even when I did upgrade one, I never felt that much more powerful. Like, I don't look at what I was able to do at the end versus the beginning and think, man, I really came a long way. No, I can just spin and throw my lightsaber a little bit now. Like, some of the animations are cool, but that's about it. Combat is also totally unbalanced in this game and is usually too easy until it becomes the hardest game of all time. One-on-one -on -one fights are usually incredibly simple. Enemies have very limited movesets and you can just bully them even on harder difficulties. Here's me at the beginning of the game fighting this enemy type for the first time and legit just trying to fight him completely normal, and I end up trapping him in a corner and absolutely dismantling this poor guy. I should not be able to do this in the regular flow of combat. I wasn't even trying to exploit it or anything, it's just that easy to fight most things. Most encounters also last for about 10 seconds before you rush on to the next thing. Typically the most you'll have is a couple of stormtroopers that you can take out from a distance by reflecting their blasters, and then three to four other enemies that you can quickly slice through, or maybe a huge glob of small creatures that you can one-tap. Sometimes enemy health bars are a little bit tankier, but none of these encounters were long enough to let me sit with the action and they were either way too spaced out or way too cramped. I'm not feeling any pressure or I'm getting bum rushed. On Jedi Master difficulty, some enemies knock off like 60% of your health with certain moves and even still, at one point I was so tired of ripping through everything that I turned it to Jedi Grand Master difficulty and the game said okay. So you have chosen death. The combat also clearly wasn't designed for multiple tough enemies to come at you at once. Those situations literally force you to run back and slowly chip away until you whittle them down on higher difficulties because their aggression and unblockables don't give you the chance to really sit and parry and weave through multiple enemies. The combat fundamentals of Survivor are fine, but the combat design is very lacking in my opinion. I eventually just stuck with regular master difficulty, which is the second highest option, and I'd say that 95% of my encounters I could get through with my eyes closed, and 5% of encounters there'd be a difficulty spike that came out of nowhere, mainly with optional bosses. Like for example, this one boss early on offers almost zero margin for error, especially with no stims at this point, and another boss later on took me more time than some of the main missions on their own, but I'm pretty sure I didn't die to a main boss the whole game. And speaking of bosses, these were generally a pretty big disappointment for me. They were usually mechanically barren with only a handful of moves each, and a lot of them had really low health. About halfway through the game, I realized that I'd only fought like two bosses, and the rest were maybe mini bosses, if I'm being generous. But to be honest, it felt like half the time the game was just bugging out and accidentally making regular enemies' health bars bigger because that's kind of what it felt like fighting them. Some were more fleshed out than others, but on the whole, you'd be lucky to catch a boss who had more than three attacks. The camera would also get stuck occasionally and that could cause some confusion, like for example, I'll give anyone who can explain what just happened here $5,000, and animations in combat feel even more disjointed, jumpy, and jittery than those in regular exploration. I think sometimes it was unintentional, just another performance problem, but most of the time transitions between moves felt so unnatural natural, and I didn't feel like I had full control of my actions. The Force abilities are helpful, but they're also really simple and could have been a lot more creative. Plus, for a long time, all you really have is push, pull, and confuse. I feel like we could have done a lot better. Like most things I've mentioned in this video, I don't hate the combat and never thought, God, I can't wait for this to be over. I was just waiting for it to give me something special, you know? Fun bosses, some real skill checks that didn't feel like artificially bumped up damage numbers, abilities that made me feel truly powerful, encounters that required me to control my spacing and stay alert. And I never quite got any of that. The discussion around Jedi Survivor is interesting because so much of the discourse is not around the core elements of this game. If it's not the performance itself, it's people talking about how Respawn apparently refused a delay when they could have had more time because they were afraid of the games releasing in the following weeks. To clarify, because people are really taking that refused a delay headline and running with it, they were asked by EA how long of a delay they needed and they said six weeks, even though they could have pushed it a few more because they thought they could hit that timeline and they wanted to avoid other major releases. They didn't reject a delay, they miscalculated how long they'd need for the one that they got. I 
think that's an important distinction. If it's not those topics though, it's people calling out Respawn for their physical disc not containing all the data you need to play, or getting mad that they added an arachnophobia mode. Why are people mad at this? How is this even a discussion? I don't know. I really, honestly, I, I promise there are better things to do with your life than be upset at this. But with all of that swirling around, I feel like all I've seen is people hand-wavingly say, yeah, the game's good otherwise, but I don't see great breakdowns of why. It just doesn't do much to stand out to me, and that's not always bad. I mean, God knows I've enjoyed my fair share of safe games, but there's usually something special to hook me. In a game like Ghost, it was the combat. In a game like Stray, it was the atmosphere and the world. I don't know if Survivor really has that other than it's Star Wars. Plus, I just think it's a lot easier to forgive the first game in a new series for some of its shortcomings than it is to forgive a second game because the first game still has new ideas, even if it's just setting or characters and stuff like that. I guess I just expected more out of Jedi Survivor. At the end of the day, it's a totally serviceable action game that came out in mid-May and had its reputation tainted by a bad PC port, but it should have easily slid into the game of the year conversation and we'll probably forget about it by year's end. But honestly, maybe I'm being a bit too harsh here. Maybe everyone else is enjoying this, so uh, let me know what you you thought of Jedi Survivor in the comments. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, join the Discord, it's in the description, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.